in what is a somewhat uncharacteristic mode for the president, Joseph Robinette Biden, he suddenly appears to be leading, or at least giving the appearance of leading, in a stirring speech at the White House this evening. Uh, Biden stood firm with Israel and denounced Hamas and their actions. As the war now enters its fifth day, it's already tomorrow in Israel. 900 Palestinians reportedly have been killed in Gaza with the death count in Israel now exceeding 1,200. It's abhorrent. The brutality of Hamas bloodthirstiness brings to mind the worst rampages of ISIS. Joseph Robinette Biden. In a 10-minute speech to the White House, Biden confirmed Tuesday evening that Americans are known to be among the hostages held by Hamas after its ludicrous rampage over the weekend. Biden delivered an emotional and anger denunciation of the terror and making clear he expected a forceful reprisal by Israel. He also said the U.S. is surging additional military assistance to Israel, including ammunition and interceptors for its Iron Dome anti-rocket system. Biden went on to say, we stand with Israel and we will make sure it has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself and respond to this attack. Biden also condemned Hamas attack on Israel as an act of sheer evil. Now this has left over a thousand civilians dead on each side, including 14 American citizens. The Israeli military is now massing its forces along the Gaza Strip for a ground invasion, and Israeli officials have warned of a lengthy and destructive war. About 20 Americans remain unaccounted for, according to U.S. officials. Biden also stressed the brutality and human impact of the Hamas attack. And I quote, young people massacred while attending a music festival to celebrate peace. Infants in their mother's arms, grandparents in wheelchairs, Holocaust survivors abducted and held hostage, hostages whom Hamas has now threatened to execute in violation of every code of human morality. As far as the pending ground invasion, it's not clear when it's going to happen, but Israel has mobilized more than 300,000 reservists. Tens of thousands of Israeli soldiers reportedly are still sweeping the southern area of Israel for Hamas sleeper agents along the border and inside Israel. An Israeli spokesperson Richard Hesh said the following, the scope of this is going to be bigger than before and more severe. It's not going to be clean. We are going to go very, very aggressively against Hamas. We should all change the paradigm. Now, Israeli officials have urged Palestinians to flee the bombing and to leave the Gaza Strip. Now, I'm not really sure how that's going to be done since the borders are closed and they don't let people leave Gaza. The Israeli spokesman Hesh told the Palestinians they should go through the Rafah exit. But the problem with that, of course, is that the Israelis bombed that site today. And even in normal times, the Egyptians do not allow Palestinians simply to cross the border. So unless the Egyptians open up that border and let them flee, there is no escape valve for civilians trying to flee this conflict. And in that, Israel is wrong. You should leave an escape valve for them to get out to facilitate civilians fleeing the area. That's simply wrong on their part. Well, this is not going to be pretty, as I said when it began, and it is not blameless. We had the historic Abraham Accords under a previous administration, and we've had failure after failure after failure strategically by this corrupt regime in Washington. Nine days after this president became president, Myanmar, emboldened by his weakness, staged a military coup, overthrowing a democratically although thoroughly corrupt government of An Young Sung Kim and imprisoning the president and going after ethnic minorities, murdering Rohingya and rounding up political opposition figures for kangaroo courts and executing them. The military junta still over two and a half years later controls Myanmar. And what has Biden done? Virtually nothing, said virtually nothing. The carnage in Cabo Delgado by a small band of renegade ghouls the administration has done virtually nothing. The chaos in the Sahel, not only have they not done anything for it, they've exacerbated the problem in the Sahel, this administration, and in Somalia. And of course, Joe Biden's proxy war in Ukraine, a thoroughly preventable conflict that was prevented, or at least delayed, when the previous occupant of the White House kept the Russians guessing. But the moment he left, they moved 70,000 troops to the border six weeks later. And Joe Biden said nothing until it became politically convenient to distract from his son's troubles with his laptop and the big guy getting 10%. 
And let us not forget, of course, the debacle in Afghanistan where the sitting president lied to America, claiming that Americans were tired of a war. Simply not a true statement. We weren't in a war. The previous president had ended the conflict, and the United States was not engaged in combat operations in Afghanistan. It had not been. The last combat casualty was 18 months before all those American soldiers died in the airport because of his cowardice and his lies to the American people. Never mind the equipment was left behind. That was foolishly purchased with security assistance money given to Afghanistan by a corrupt Congress during 20 years. They gave that equipment. We didn't abandon the equipment. That wasn't our equipment. That was Afghanistan's equipment. The morons in Congress and the geniuses in the Department of Defense who thought that it was wise to equip a Stone Age society with Black Hawk helicopters and advanced weapon systems really need their heads checked. That's the problem. But the situation in Israel will not improve. Sadly, many innocent civilians will die because of the actions of Hamas and the obvious retaliation from Israel. One has to wonder what their intent was. There's no way that Hamas could ever have won this conflict with this offensive. And given the brutality of it, the murder, the violation, the kidnappings of innocents, the intentional targeting civilians, this was clearly an effort by Hamas to provoke a reaction from Israel. And they're going to get it. I suppose they're hoping the world will condemn Israel and hold them accountable. But for the moment, the sleeper in chief, the Manchurian cadaver sitting in the White House, stands firm with Israel. And it's about damn time he did something correct. And for that, I'll thank him. A rare thing I'll do. Folks, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be good. It's sad. People's lives are ending as we sit here and discuss this topic. Needlessly. Because the political aspirations and the arrogance of people, sadly, it's not confined to Israel and the Middle East. It's all over the world. Thank you for your support.